Good one. Cool. Yeah. Do you look? It's the Sunday school earners. Hello. Good to see everybody. Hope you had a great couple of weeks off and hope you had a good rest last Sunday. With being the week off. Um, we and I hope back to school is going as well uh, well for you. Um, we have maybe your pumpkins like ours and it's a wee bit squishy now. Uh, but I put the wee light in it today because we have a couple of girls singing uh, this little light of mine for us today. So thank you so much, Casey, Angel and Dora. Um, thank you for that. And today we're, we're going to be thinking of Moses in the little basket and then how he grew up and what uh, or how God used him in his later life. And we're also going to be doing a remembrance poppy. So we've lot, lots planned for today. Uh, there's also um, a points update coming in from the USA, I think. So hope you enjoy today's Sunday school. Bye. <laughs> Hi Bella. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Matthew chapter 19 verse 14. Hello Sunday Schoolers and I hope you've all had a really good week at school and got back into the swing of things after having your half term break and I'm sure you all enjoyed uh, being off school and I'm sure many of you like our kids as well really enjoyed getting back to school and seeing all your friends again. So just to continue on with the series that we're doing at the minute about uh, children in the Bible. And last week, I hope you all remember, we were learning about Joseph and how that Joseph in, the, in his life, how he was used by God. Well, the next person that we're going to look about uh, today is the life of Moses. And how in Joseph's life, uh, the children were all led into the land of Israel. In Moses' life, at the end of it, he actually was used to lead the people of Israel out of the land. So, the story of Moses. If you'd like to follow this in the Bible, if you turn up the second book in the Bible, that is the book of Exodus, you'll be able to read about the life of Moses. Now we're going to start off about baby Moses, where we read about this in Exodus chapter 2. Now, the children of Israel grew up to be big and strong and had to work hard for Pharaoh. King Pharaoh said, I will take away all the baby boys before they are stronger than me. Now, Miriam had a beautiful baby brother. She looked out for her out of her window, and when the soldiers came, the family hid the baby and prayed that God would keep him safe. Now, as the baby got bigger and it was nearly too big to hide, his mother made a special little basket with a bed in it to float the baby down the river Nile to a safe place. A 
and she knew in her heart that God had a plan for her little baby and that God would take care of him. So she tucked him into the bed and no doubt he probably was so comfortable he just fell fast asleep. And I'm sure she prayed over the baby and maybe even shed a wee tear as she pushed the baby out into the water. And Miriam, who was a sister, watched nearby. And you know what happened? As babies do, the baby began to cry. Now one of Pharaoh's princesses was down by the river washing and the princess found the baby and as soon as she opened up the box or the basket and looked inside she saw this beautiful baby and she fell in love with it and she knew what had happened and how she realized that the little baby would probably have been killed by the soldiers and how um, his mum must have put him in a basket to hide him. And whenever she saw him, she thought, you know, I'll call his name Moses. But you know, she hadn't given birth to this little baby, so she needed somebody to look after him. And the princess saw Miriam and sent her to find someone who would be able to feed this hungry baby. So Miriam ran home to get her mother and said, the princess needs you to look after your baby boy. So you imagine that, that God planned it, that the princess would find it and that Miriam would be able to get Moses' uh, mum to look after the baby. And how God had a plan. And you see, as Moses started to grow up and get bigger, he went to live with the princess in King Pharaoh's palace. And you know what? Moses always loved God. And he knew that God had spared him and kept him safe for a reason. And you see, what had happened in Moses' life was God had got him placed in the palace so that he could be trained up and he could learn all that he needed to. Because in years to come, what happened was that Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go. And he treated them like slaves and the children of Israel were made to work harder and harder. And God had sent so many different tests and so many plagues. Every time Moses went to Pharaoh to say, let my people go, Pharaoh kept saying, no. Until there was one night that Pharaoh was going to be taught a lesson that he would never forget. And God told Moses, that every, that this particular night, every family of Israel must eat a meal of roast lamb with herb sauce and flatbread. And it was going to be called the Passover because what they were to do, they were to take the blood of the lamb that was killed and they were to put it on the top of the door and down the two sides of the door and everyone who stayed in the house that had the, the blood over the door was going to be safe. And what happened was that night it said that God's angel was going to pass through the city and the oldest son in every family was going to die because Pharaoh would not listen to God's people. So because this little lamb's life had been shed, and because they all had obeyed what they'd been told by Moses and put the blood on the door, anyone who was inside, all the firstborn boys were all going to be safe. But 
what happened was that the families of the Israel did as God told Moses and they prayed to God that they would be kept safe and soon that they would be free from Pharaoh and be able to go to the land that God had promised them. Well then that night the angel of God passed through the city and even Pharaoh's eldest son was killed and died and God kept all the families of the Israelites safe but all the other families in the city all suffered the death of their firstborn. And since that time, God's people celebrate that the fact of what had happened at Passover. And they thank him for saving them and for what Jesus did for them when he came into this world. You see, boys and girls, when the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, he came into this world so that there was no longer a need for the little lamb to be sacrificed to remember the Passover. The Bible tells us that whenever he came into this world, that he came to take away our sin. And he was a once for all sacrifice to take away the punishment for our sin. And when the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross of Calvary, quite often in the Bible it's nearly described that he was as the Lamb of God. You see, the same way that that little lamb back uh, in their story, whenever they were told to stay in after the lamb's blood had been applied, that little lamb's life was given up so everyone in the house would be safe. And almost 2,000 years ago, whenever the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, he came into this world to die upon the cross of Calvary, to take away the punishment for our sin, so that we could be saved, so that we could be set free from the sin that would mean that we wouldn't be fit for heaven. And in the same way, boys and girls, whenever the people, they had a choice, they could either listen to Moses and do what they were told, how they were to kill the lamb and apply the blood to the outside and then stay in the house and be safe. Or they could just say no I, I'm not going to do that I'll just do my own thing and I'm sure I'll be okay but you see it's the same sometimes people whenever they hear about the Lord Jesus Christ and why he died upon the cross and that it's only those who believe and put their faith and trust in him shall be saved and shall know for a certain that they shall be in heaven for all eternity and it's a bit like that as well boys and girls that we must do what the Bible tells us and that we must put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about Moses and we'll have to find out who the next person that we'll be thinking about for next Sunday. Enjoy the rest of Sunday School. Bye bye. Well hello again. Yes you know when you see me it's either the quizzes or the verse and this week it's the quiz. Now I hope you all had a good week off and that your brains are well rested and that you've got now we well in gear and you can remember back a few weeks because I have I've got the questions again and do you remember the topic that we're doing in the talks it's about young people and children in the bible and Mark's given us two talks so I'm going to go back to the first talk and the second talk this week and see what you can remember so eight questions first question in today and it's about Cain and Abel. Do you remember they were the first two boys born in the Bible? And my first question is what offering did Cain bring to God? Okay so the second question is then what offering did Abel bring to God? All right, now, so it tells us in the Bible that God accepted Abel's offering, but he didn't accept Cain's. Do you know, you know why? Can you remember why God accepted Abel's offering? Okay, 
Question number four. Now, the next talk then was about Joseph. Do you remember about Joseph? Now, Mark told us, and see if you can remember, how many brothers Joseph had. He had quite a lot of older brothers and not so many younger brothers. Do you remember the total number of brothers that they had? Question five. I think this is an easier one. Joseph's dad gave him something very special that he hadn't given to any of his other brothers. Do you remember what that was? All right, question number six. Joseph had two dreams. Can you remember what one of them was? He had two dreams. They were a bit similar. See if you can remember what one of the dreams were. All right, question number seven. Do you remember then his dad sent him off to see how his older brothers were getting on? And they saw him coming and said, oh, here comes the dreamer. Oh, and do you remember? They did something very bad. Can you remember what they did to Joseph? All right, and our last question, question number eight. Tells us even though bad things happened to Joseph, that somebody was with him and helped him um, and knew what was going on and in fact had a plan for his life. So who helped him? Because who did Joseph trust in? And it's the same person that we can trust in too. All right, so that's your eight, eight questions for this week. So see how you get on. And send your answers in and, and hopefully you'll get the answers right because I know you're all listening really, really well. Okay. Hello. I'm just going to show you quickly how this week's craft is done. As we know, we're coming up to Poppy, or Remembrance Sunday. Um, and when we traditionally wear poppies um, to remember uh, people that give their lives in the war. And I'm just going to show you how to make this, this poppy that we can maybe put up in our homes. Okay. So... First of all, we put on the green. Well, how little there. And now I'm going to give you the latest election results. So, Trump's leading in Texas and Mississippi, but then Biden's coming back with Arizona. Benji! Push in the school points up there. Oh, um. <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday school points up there. Today we have Casey and Dora, Lewis and Leah, and Sam and Isabel with three points. And I think it, some people already have for prizes, so they might not get them this week because I got them last week. But if you haven't got your prize, don't worry, we'll get them. And then. There's a lot of people with one point, which is Emily and Megan, the McAvoyles, Sophie and Bobby, the one that used to be on these, and Zara Palmer, all on one point. But that's just because they got lots of points last week and they got their prizes last week. So, this is me with some of the score points up there. Any of them, you ghost. This week's digging deeper, I'm just continuing on the theme of remembrance. You've done the poppies and I hope you've enjoyed doing that. It's a time of year that we wear the pop poppy and as everybody knows, it's to remind us of soldiers who gave up their lives, who sacrificed their lives um, in years uh, past, especially in the, the, the world wars, uh, to, so that we could enjoy the liberty and the freedom that we do today. And that's really important to remember. I remember whenever I was uh, a, a, a lot younger than I am now, my dad took us to a town in Belgium called Ypres. And when we were there, we went to see what's called the Men in the Gate. Now, we've been through all the different graveyards and seen the rows and rows of wee white crosses of, of soldiers of all nationalities who died in the war. But this one particularly stuck in my mind. It was a massive, big, or it is a massive, big arch. And on that arch are lots and lots of names. And every name there represents some soldier who died that they couldn't find the body of. And it just really spoke home to me about uh, the... the, the the, 
waste of human life uh, and, and the great tragedy of that. And that's something that's always stuck with me. And you know, it's good to remember, it helps us uh, be thankful for what we have now. And in the Bible and the Old Testament, there's a number of memorials that God instituted to help the Israelites remember. One of my favourite is whenever the Israelites finally got onto the Promised Land. That's in Joshua 4, if you want to look it up. And they got over, they got over the Jordan. God miraculously uh, let them cross over in dry land. He parted the waters of the Jordan and they got over the other side. And God told them, told Joshua whenever they got on the other side, that they, they had to institute a memorial. It was a big pile of stones. It wasn't as fancy as the men in the gate, but it was so that in years to come, um, as, uh, as, as the Israelites, the Israeli people walk past with their children, that they would be able to remember and testify to God's faithfulness of what was done on that spot and remember how God was faithful and is faithful to, to the children of Israel. In the New Testament too, there's a remembrance, a memorial that was instituted and this time it was instituted by Jesus and it's in Luke 22. And maybe you'll think, you'll maybe know which one I'm thinking of. Um, it's not a memorial, it's not like a stone we go and see or a statue we go to see. It is um, the bread and the wine. Um, as Christians, we partake, um, many churches partake every week of what's called, can be called communion or the Lord's Supper or the breaking of bread. And we do that in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. We remember then in the bread and the wine, his body and his blood shed for us. And we think of what he did for us at Calvary. And that's really important. It helps us focus and helps us connect and helps us draw out our hearts in worship and thanksgiving to him who uh, gave up his life for us. You know, in the Bible, it says that um, there no greater love hath, uh, has, has a man for another than to give up his life for a friend. And we have to be so thankful and we should be so thankful uh, to the Lord for what he did for us. Whenever he took the pain, the punishment um, of our sins and bore them on the cross, and of course, we know that he had the victory in rising again a few days later. So it's just to remember the memorials, the remembrances in the Bible. It's a, it's a good study and um, maybe I'll put up a few more verses along the bottom here uh, for you to maybe look up in your own free time. Thanks. Father, we thank for this another week of Sunday School. We thank you for everyone who's listened in today, Father, and we just we pray that they would be blessed by the story that they heard, Father, about Moses. Father, we just pray as they go into this next week, Father, that you'd be with them and that they would know your presence, Father. We pray that you help them to complete their challenges and to send them back into us. We just pray that you'd be with them now, Father, the rest of this day. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>